Now we're going to play the light and color game just to sort of anticipate what you're going to be seeing in your still lives. If I put this yellow in front of my incandescent light source, does the color temperature of the illuminated surface shift a bit? But how about the shadows? Right? It intensifies it just a little bit because it's so similar to the natural light that's in the room, right? But just kicks it up a little bit. I'm going to kick up the intensity a little bit more um, of our light source. And now the, the cup is illuminated with red light. And what happened to the shadow? Yeah, a little bit more blue-green, right? I agree with you, right? But now it's much more obvious that the color temperature of the light and the color temperature of the shadow are opposites. Intensely warm and intensely cool, right? You have to imagine that there's probably what's being, what we're being allowed to see, right, is all this other color, but what's dominant is something in this range. In other words, um, we're seeing a little bit more of this because some of these others are being canceled out a little bit. Okay, so it's the dominant wavelength and frequency that's in the residual light that's in the shadow and there could be a little bit of that mutual intensification going on. Isn't that amazing that you can see blue-violet light and a yellow shadow? Right, it looks green on the illuminated side and the shadow is subtle, but can you see a color temperature in the shadow? Not only is it, is it true that nature present, presents us with a cool color temperature in the residual light of the shadow as the dominant light of the shadow, but our brains are also trying to make a kind of distinction and it mutually intensifies the shadow color next to it. So the red gets a little redder and the blue gets a little bluer. We are always seeing color opposites in light and shadow.